Let's get into making our first unit test with PyTest. Let's start by making sure our current working directory is the root of our project. Now, there are two common approaches for organizing your tests, and really, it's just a matter of preference. One common approach is to keep your tests under each module that they're testing. The other is to put all your tests at the root of your project directory, and I like to split them up between unit and integration. And that's the approach we'll be taking. So we'll create a test directory and under it, we'll create a unit directory. Then we'll also go ahead and just create our integration directory for use later. Next, we'll create our first test file. The important thing to remember here is you want to start your file name with test underscore or end with underscore test. That way, PyTest will know that it's a test file. So we'll call ours test underscore simple. Each test file should always start with the import PyTest. One great thing about PyTest is there's really not a lot of boilerplate. And this is really just about it. Next, we'll create our first test function. And the same rule applies here. If you want PyTest to treat a function as a test, you're going to want to start it with test underscore. So we'll call ours test underscore equality. Finally, on line 5, we have our assert statement. And that's really the heart and soul of a test. Your assert statement is saying, what needs to be true in order for this test to pass? In this case, we're asserting that one equals one. And every time that's true, our test will pass. If that's ever not true, our test will fail. Obviously, this is a really contrived and arbitrary test. But normally, you'll be calling your functions and making sure they're returning the expected output. You can put as many test functions as you want inside of a test file. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to split up one test per file. So let's go ahead and run this test. Now, all we need to do is run the PyTest command, and PyTest will look for all of our test scripts below the location we're currently at. And then, inside of those test files, it'll look for all the test functions, and it'll run them one by one. Right now, we only have one test file and one test function, so we're just going to run PyTest. It'll find it and run it. Alternatively, if you just wanted to run one test, you could explicitly say what test file or what test function to run. You'll often be running this PyTest command at the terminal, and you'll see output like we have below. The most important line is usually the last line, because it tells you how many passes and fails you had. In addition, it shows us which test files were run. In this case, it was just test underscore simple.py. It can also be helpful to know which version of Python was running. And the first two lines give us some information about the environment the test was run in. And this can be helpful if tests are failing somewhere but succeeding for someone else. Now that was just a single test, and it didn't produce a lot of output. But before you know it, you're going to have lots of pie tests, and they're going to really build up, and you'll have a lot of output to look through. So one approach to handling that is to pipe your output to a text editor or an output file. In this case, I'm just going to pipe to Visual Studio Code. And so you can see we have the same output, but it's in a text editor, so we can search it. It's a lot better for demonstrating, too. Great, so we've created our first test, and we've run it. We're feeling good, so let's move on to a little more complicated test, and we'll be using a parameterized test set. So we'll create another test file called test underscore mini. Again, we'll start with our import PyTest statement. Next, we'll create another test function just like we did before, and this is doing about the same thing where it's testing to see if our equal input is equal to expected. But instead of using one and one, we're using variables. So we're going to call the same test multiple times and pass it a bunch of values. So let's build up that test set. One convenient way to do that is with the built in parameterized pytest function. So we just add this pytest.mark.parameterized decorator. Then we specify the variable names. So equal input and expected need to match up with the variables we used as arguments in our test underscore equals function. Finally, we're just going to create a list of values and their expected outputs. So we're going to test to see if 1 equals 1, 2 equals 2, if 3 equals 4, which we know will fail, and then finally if 5 equals 5. And we're passing all these as arguments to our test function, so our test function is actually going to run four times. Again, we'll run the PyTest command, 
This time, we'll add the verbose option, and we'll see that it'll give us a nice pass-fail table. So here's our output. Got quite a bit more. Lines 7 through 11 are what we got by adding the verbose statement. And we can see in line 9 that we had one failure. And because we have a failure, it also added the failure section. The failure section gives us lots of information about what failed. Specifically, on line 27, it shows that the assert statement 3 equals 4 was false. Finally, we have the summary at the bottom that shows 1 failed and 4 passed. That makes sense because we had one test from before that ran again, and we had four additional tests that we added for a total of five. Well, we've test and run two fairly simple test functions, and now we're going to be using another component of PyTest called fixtures. Fixtures are just a way of doing the build up and tear down work so that you can isolate your unit test to just the code that you want to test. So let's look at an example application code is today Saturday. So this isn't a test function. This is a really simple function that tells us if today is Saturday or not. But we can see the dilemma already that it's going to be hard to actually test this function because we could be running it on a Saturday or a Monday or Tuesday or any day of the week. And specifically, the thing that makes this function hard to test is line 6, where it's calling the now function from the built-in date time class. This obviously returns what the current time is now and then checks to see if it's a Saturday or not. So how would we go about making sure that our logic to test if it's a Saturday or not actually works? So we'll start our test file with some extra imports because we're gonna be doing a little bit of work in this test. Next, we'll start by creating our test function. Now, this looks pretty straightforward as our assert statement just says, call the isTodaySaturday function and determine if it's true. The key here is that we're going to pass in mock underscore date time underscore now as an argument. And that, as you'll see, is going to kind of override part of our application code so that we can do some successful unit testing. Now, because our application code is outside of our test, we'll just go ahead and import that module. I just put the is today Saturday function inside of an example module. So now we'll go ahead and create our first fixture. And this is the same fixture that we're passing as an argument in line 12 to test is today Saturday. We'll call this fixture mock date time now. And we'll use the argument monkey patch. So there's lots of different fixture options and monkey patch is the one that does mocking. And mocking is like an impersonation of a real function. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a mock time. And we'll use the real date time class to create a date time object that happens to be a Saturday. And we'll assign that value to mock time. Next, we'll create a class that we're going to use to replace the date time class. And we'll call it mock today. And we'll give it a function named now. But instead of returning the current date time, it'll return the mock time we created on line 8. Finally, we'll use monkey patch to kind of inject that class to overwrite date time. So we'll replace date time with mock today. Well, let's see if it works. I'll show you one more option for how to run the PyTest command. This time we'll use TB equals line, and that shows us a one line summary for each error we have, rather than giving us all that long output for each error like we saw before. So great, on line 11, we can see that our is today Saturday test passed. So I'm really excited. We covered a lot of ground today, and I think that you'll be confident moving forward with unit testing, and maybe specifically moving forward with unit testing using PyTest. Thanks for watching.